this is gonna be a short video about a new project. It's a iHawk uh, 9, which is also a VSAT 9 scooter, 9 plus to be exact, with a dual motor version. Uh, iHawk is the version uh, for Germany, and it has 250 watts each motor, and original controllers come with like um, 7 amps, I believe, maybe 8 amps. So they're much weaker, they're actually made to go 20, Two kilometers an hour at, at, at the most as it is actually certified uh, for the germany 20 kilometers an hour has like the wind code and all of that so 2023 production and uh, this scooter has been modified with first of all it's a 650 watts v set 9 motors so there are no longer 250 watts motors because there is actually the difference in winding uh, the winding on uh, on the iHawk motors was uh, much uh, lower KV, so the top speed was only 20 kilometers, 22 kilometers an hour. That's the maximum speed the wheel could get um, on the road. In the air, it would get up to like 25 kilometers an hour. And then we use uh, one of those controllers. Um, this is the prototype version, earlier one. Um, now they have U-Box Lite um, singles like that, but with the ignition port as well. Those is the prototype version. And actually in, in the scooter, there is a dual version of this, which is slightly shorter. It's uh, about this long. Uh, I think it's a couple of millimeters uh, shorter. So not much of a difference, but it makes a lot easier to use the dual version. Uh, and it's a little bit shorter, which helps uh, of course, a lot with the such a tight fit because it also has a custom battery inside. As you can see, controller is very small. This is how small the one single controller is. And the dual is smaller than two of those, so you can imagine. And that's 100 amps each. Well, it's capable of. Um, they're made, made from a aluminum PCB. This is the power stage of those controllers. As you can see, it's aluminum PCB, everything on one side, and they're insanely small. There is very little space to be wasted. Well, actually, I don't think there is any space that is wasted. Everything is used either for traces or for the components. Components are super tight, as you can see. But uh, this is Spintan brand. This is what's installed in there, and we use also a green, uh, Statorde in the rear, in the rear wheel, for uh, to to help with the cooling. And as this version of iHawk 9 is actually comes with um, blinkers and the head, headlight and V set. Um, sorry, spin tent, which is also this is how it span, spells spin tent. Uh, also provides an integration board which allows which allows to do this. First of all, the brake, the brake works and shines, uh, the lamp shines on the back, as you can see, when you press it, and blinkers as well, on the sides. This sound comes from a integration board, they call it ADC adapter. Blinkers also integrated as well as the headlamp. Everything is integrated. Now, those VSC controllers, they support uh, 605 uh, fireware, the software. And this software is, is in support of a Lisp uh, protocol, which is something that allows it to basically integrate with original VSET, Zero and Makuta displays. As you can see, the speed is correctly shown on the display. Not only that, you can also switch the modes, even on the fly. Right now there's three modes, one to three, as you can see, but there is also a two secret modes. For example, if I go, uh, the first mode is like uh, 20 amps, the second mode is uh, 20, uh, 30 amps and the fourth mode is 40 amps uh, that's a phase phase amps 
fully configurable. And the speed, of course, also is limited 10, 15, and 22 kilometers an hour. That's what I have it at. But then if you go back to mode two, mode three, mode two, mode three, I now can achieve higher speed, 24 kilometers an hour uh, on the front wheel. It shows the front wheel speed. The rear motor is VSAT 9, so it goes actually much faster. It goes to 52 kilometers an hour, but the display is connected to the front wheel, so it only sees the speed of the front wheel, which is not yet a VSAT 9 motor. I'll have to replace it later. Now we can connect to the controller. The Bluetooth is connected to the same controller as uh, the display is connected to. And that's the front motor. So you can see the local controller and that's the front motor. Let's see the real real time data. You can hear the rear motor spinning at the full speed. Um, but the front only goes to 24. As you remember, that's the speed that display shows. I can actually show it to you. So now if I switch back to mode one, it will go back to the locked mode. 10, three, 22 kilometers an hour. 22 kilometers an hour. And they're fully synced. Uh, display shows exact data, exact speed. I've also checked it with the GPS. The speed is correct. And we can also see the rear motor. So it goes 22, mode two, mode three, mode two, mode three. 61 kilometer an hour it actually is capable of doing and that's without uh, let's see motor config fog field weakening this is without field weakening so 60 kilometers an hour in the air this display also when you turn it off it turned off the controller because it receives uh, full battery voltage, and then it has an, another cable that goes back down, uh, which is ignition cable. It basically sends full battery voltage back down only after display has been enabled. And this is what you can use for VSC as an ignition port. Um, this is what you will have, um, I'll put the picture in, for spin tent uh, toolbox light. There will be a second port, another port, which will say ignition. And that's where you connect that cable back. Uh, when you turn off the display, the controller will also uh, turn off. So everything is fully integrated. The speed, the modes, even the uh, unlock modes, uh, including the RFID. So this controller does not pass through the acceleration, the throttle, unless you, uh, at this display, I mean, unless you unlock it with a, air, uh, with a RFID tag. It can be a bank card, it can be a RFID tag that comes with it, like a VSAT one or iHawk one. So this display uh, for 50 bucks, this is the best display you can get for, for those controllers. I don't think you need to look any further. This is, it does everything. It does ignition, it, it reads the speed correctly, it does the modes, it does the secret modes as well. Um, Everything it, uh, it can do everything you need for a VAC integration. And if you want a stealthy install like that, then you those displays come on Makuta, they come on iHawk, they come on the VSET, any of those. And with the AGC board, you also can integrate the blinkers, uh, the headlight, and even uh, for a full two-wheel drive or single motor uh, button can be integrated. I do not have it integrated yet, but it can be integrated. Or you can just reuse that button for something else like a horn, uh, another headlamp or whatever you want. The wires are already there, so you can use it for something. That's all, that's how this project has been.